I get this question a lot. How do you pick the best coding projects to learn from? I'm following these tutorials. I wanna pick a good coding project, Kazi. What, what is it that actually helps me the most? What should I spend my time on? Well, you're in a great place, my friend, because in this video, we're gonna answer that. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so you wanna pick the best project. Your time is important. If you work on the wrong project, you might actually spend a lot of time working towards something you could actually never get done in the first place. If you work on a project that's too easy, now you've spent your time building something you completely already knew how to do and you did not learn any new skills and it won't even be good on your portfolio if you decide to put it there. And in reality, it'll actually be just a waste of your precious time. We have many resources in the world. We have money, which is infinite. We have energy, which is actually infinite, right? I can put in, boom, as much energy as I want into this video, but that energy does not go away, away, away. That energy is actually still here. I have it and I can go all in on the next video and I can go all in tomorrow. But what we don't have infinite of, my friend, is time. It's a limited resource and so, your time is very important and if you're gonna work on a project that isn't gonna be the best for you and isn't gonna help you grow in your career, in your self-learning, then it's not worth your time. So how do you pick the best coding project to learn from? Doesn't matter what programming language you're working in, Python, C, Java. I have a few answers for you, okay? And I'm gonna answer this not in a generic way, just do whatever you feel like, man, like just, practice, just look online and you know, feel it. I'm gonna give you some tangible, tactical answers you can apply. So one of the things I'll say is, I'm gonna start off straight off the bat with the best way. Speak to somebody who's more experienced than you in coding, okay? Knows a lot more about coding than you do, okay? Somebody who might, you might even look up to. And ask them this question, what project should I pick that will be quite possibly really challenging for me and at the same time still very doable. Here are some of the projects I've worked on. Here is my GitHub, okay? If you have a GitHub and please make a GitHub, show them what kind of things you've worked on. And if they will invest a little bit of time with you, they can see what your skill level is at, what kind of concepts you're familiar with. If they see that you can solve Fibonacci problems, they'll be like, okay, this person is familiar a little bit with recursion. If they see you have done like a tic-tac-toe problem recursively that can beat any computer, now they're like, okay, this person is really comfortable with recursive problems, so maybe the project that I'll give them, I wouldn't shy so much away from recursion. But if you've never done it, then you don't wanna start on a project that will require you to use the concept of recursion. Does that make sense? So by asking that question, you're having somebody who can look out for you like a mentor and give you very specific advice on the list of projects that would fit your current skill level. This is very important because if you just Google everything and copy paste everything, now you're just learning how to copy and paste. But if it's too easy for you, now you're wasting your time, right? So by somebody actually looking out for you and giving you a list of these that could be challenging for you but very doable based on your current skill level, that will be incredibly valuable for you because a solid project shouldn't take you one day or two days to do. A solid project should take you one to two weeks or more to do, okay? And when you work on a project that goes very deep, the amount you'll learn increases exponentially, okay? So I'll say it like this. If you're working on 10 small projects, right, is gonna be you're gonna learn one thing from one small project, one thing from the second small project, one thing from the third small project and after doing 10 projects you'll learn 10 new things but if you work on one project and you just go incredibly deep you're gonna learn one new thing day one you're gonna learn one new thing day two one new thing day three and by the end of 10 days in a weird way you actually wouldn't learn 10 new things you will learn a hundred new things and so 
it goes, the depth of knowledge is a lot more important than the width of knowledge when it comes to coding, my friend. Please don't fall into the, oh, I'm just gonna do 100 projects and that'll be impressive. Even to your employer, that's actually not gonna be impressive, okay? The person who's gonna potentially recruit you, hire you, whatever, that may be freelancing full-time, doesn't matter. But if you do one project that you've been working on for a really long time and you're just doing small steps, but over a course of, you know, think about a few weeks, a month, a year, that project will be ginormous and that'll be something you're proud of and you'll learn about how to maintain code. How do you run a project for a very long time? How do you deal with it in a way where when you come back to it, you still understand it? You're gonna learn about documentation. You're gonna learn about how to make it, your code readable. You're gonna learn these things through yourself, not through a textbook. You're literally gonna learn this because you're gonna go through an experience where if you don't write readable code, when you come back to your very own project a month later, you're gonna be like, what the hell am I working on right now? You're gonna have no idea and you're gonna be lost and you're either gonna to have to destroy that project and start from new, scratch, a month's worth of work gone and that's gonna give you that painful lesson and then you're gonna be like, I need to write readable code. That's why this is important. I need to document my code. I need to have a readme file when I post to GitHub. I need to have proper documentation. I need to have testing for my code. So just even looking at the tests, I can see what my code is doing, okay? And other people can see what it's doing. And overall, it's gonna put you in a position where you're gonna become a lot more employable than that next person who's doing 10 free code camp projects and just like putting it on their resume. Nothing wrong with free code camp and nothing wrong with using, you know, doing many projects, but I would say avoid shallow work, my friend work on deep projects, and if you ask somebody specifically, that would be great. Now, if you don't have somebody you can ask in person, you can pay for their time going to a service like Code Mentor, hire a developer, pay them 50 bucks or 100 uh, bucks for an hour of their time to listen to you and give you potentially a list of projects because you're gonna be working on this project for a few weeks, maybe months, right? So, what you don't wanna do is pick something that is not worth pursuing, okay? And, is, and if your one week or two weeks or a few months of your time isn't even worth 50 or 100 bucks to you, let's say you actually just don't have that much money, then what you can do is like post it online, go to forums, develop a relationship with some other developers there and ask this question and there will be people who will answer you, okay? And they can help you pick a solid list of projects. You know, because if you just look online, you're gonna get this generic list of projects once, and I don't believe one size fits all when it comes to something like coding. It needs to be very custom, tailor-made to you to give you those best peak performance things, okay? Um, and I believe Tony Robbins says this, and he's like, if you can't plan your life, you can't plan your day. So remember that, until you can plan your life, you can't plan your day. And until you can plan out the project, you can't plan out what you're gonna be coding on the next day. That's my tip for you for the day. This is Kazi. Thank you so much for watching. As always, my beautiful person sitting on the other side of the screen, I care for you. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for being on this channel. If you have any questions, please comment below. Like the video if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, dislike it. But I want you to be active, okay? I don't want you to be passive. So. That's it, subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for this video. As always, I love your faces off and I'll see you in the next video.